Well, once again, I want to tell all the partners of this ministry, thank you. Thank you, partners, for sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do. You know, there's thousands of people all over this planet that have downloaded this podcast and gotten set free through the truths that you have helped us send out all over this planet, the truths of God's Word. That's what this thing's all about teaching people that they can stand on what he says and believe what he says. And partners, you're helping us do that. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today, a hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. Glory to God, I look at, at all the people that get hold of God's word and think, my goodness, how God has used the people that listen to this podcast to give his word away all over this planet. And I thank God for you. Thank you very much. Now, this is week five, week five, that we are in a study in 1 Corinthians. I want to encourage you to go back to to January or June the 21st of 2021. Download this, this phone app and get all these podcasts from June 21st forward. Now, this this there's over 1,200 podcasts available. You can, you can listen to every one of them. They're all free, uh, free because our partners helps us put this stuff out here for free. God wants this stuff to go out so people don't have a hindrance of, of getting it. And, and, and the, and the Lord is seeing fit that it gets out there. People are getting hold of it, but you can get all these podcasts. They don't cost you a thing. You can download them straight to your phone and and feed on them on a daily basis. Every day, you can listen to them 24 hours a day if you want to. It don't cost anything. So download them. Get hold of what God is saying in His Word. Strengthen yourself in His Word. We've, We've started this Corinthian study, and it just gets stronger and stronger as we go. That, that what Paul is saying in his epistles is for us. It's for the church. It's for people that have been born into the family of God and need strength. Well, if you need strength, take that strength. Believe that strength. And what, what, do you want to, what am I wanting you to believe that strength for? Believe God's Word. Because if you'll believe God's Word, it'll strengthen you. It'll help you. Faith in Him will carry you far further. Than, than, he, than billions of dollars will ever send you in this world. I promise you that. Having faith in what he has said will strengthen you to the point that the devil can't break you. So listen, go back to June the 21st and download this phone app and get hold of what God is saying to you, for you, and about you in his word. I thank God that his word is out there for people to get hold of and believe today. Once again, I want to bring you my prayers for the world that we live in, for you and me and everybody else that walks face this planet, that we could all come to realize and know and understand His love and His mercy, His grace and His goodness. You know, that was Paul's prayers for the Ephesians, and I have have taken those prayers and adopted them for you and I, for every person that lives on this planet today, that we all come to realize just how much God loves us, just how much He pray, He cares for us, and just how much He wants to be part of our lives. Ephesians 1.15, Paul said, Ever since I first heard of your strong faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for God's people everywhere, I have not stopped thanking God for you. I pray for you constantly, asking God, the glorious Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, to give you spiritual wisdom and insight so that you might grow in your knowledge of God. I pray that your hearts will be flooded with light so that you can understand the confident hope He has given to those He called, His holy people, who are His rich and glorious inheritance. I also pray that you will understand the incredible greatness of God's power for us who believe Him. This is the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead and seated Him in the place of honor at God's right hand in the heavenly realms. Now He is far above any ruler or authority or power or leader or anything else, not only in this world, but also in the world to come. 
God has put all things under the authority of Christ and has made him head over all things for the benefit of the church. And the church is his body. It is made full and complete by Christ who fills all things everywhere with himself. Ephesians 3.14 says, When I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. May you experience the love of Christ. Though it is too great to understand fully, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. I pray this in Jesus name. Amen. I thank God. I see his love, his mercy, his grace and his goodness every day of my life more and more. And I do it through his word. I hear it through his word. I see it through his word. Let's see what God's word has to say today. Father, I thank you and I praise you, God, for your word. Guide me. Use me for your honor and your glory. Help me be the light and the vessel, Lord, that you can shine through, that you can speak through today. Touch my mind. Touch my mouth. Help me be the light that you would have me to be. Guide and direct me, Lord, today, and I'll forever give you all the praise and glory for it all. In Jesus' holy name I pray. Amen. Let's go, let's go into 2 Corinthians 2 and 12. It says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, and we, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Now let me back up and, and just touch on something right here. He said, Paul said, we, are not given, we have not received the spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things which are freely given to us. You're not, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a proclamation today, and I'm, I'm going to read this in the, in the Amplified and the New Living also. But I'm going I'm to proclaim something to you today. You are not going to see nor receive the promises of God by, by listening to, to that, that spirit of this world, by living in that spirit. What did it say? Now, we have, have received not the spirit of, of, of the world. You don't want to live in that, in that craziness. I promise you, you don't. If there's something in this world today that you don't want, and that is the spirit that, that is pushing the world we live in. Let me read what 1 Corinthians 2 and 12 says in the New Living. It says, as we have received and we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things that God has freely given us. The Amplified Classic of 1 Corinthians 2 and 12 says, now we have not received the spirit that belongs to the world, but the Holy Spirit who is from God given to us that we might realize and comprehend and appreciate the gift of divine favor and blessings so freely lavished, bestowed on us by God. Listen, if you want something from God today, allow the Holy Spirit to show you what, what God has for you. See, the Spirit, the, the world will never allow you to see what God really wants you to see in his kingdom. They, he, the world don't want you to re receive what God has for you. But it's been freely given to us if we'll just take it and believe it. And when, when the only way that you're ever going to receive something from God is to believe what he says and let the Holy Spirit minister to you instead of letting the world minister to you. I lived a lot of years of my life watching TV 
and and paying attention to the news media and and all the craziness that goes on in the world and letting that uh, shape the way I looked at things. I've stopped it. The revelation of Jesus Christ and the word that God has written down for us to live, live in through him has changed the way I have looked at my life for a long time. We have been freely given a lot of things on this earth by God. And it's up to us not to listen to this r- wicked world that we live in and let it allow, and, and allow it to hinder us from receiving from God. If you're ever going to believe what we talked about Monday, and that was Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14, if you're ever going to believe that you can receive the promises of God and that the promises that God has made to his children, if you're ever going to receive that, you have got to get in God's word and allow his Holy Spirit to guide you and convince you that that you can count on him. I lived a lot of years and and never could count on God, not because I didn't think he was he was good enough to give me what he promised. No, it was exactly the opposite. I felt like that I wasn't good enough to receive those promises. Do you, do you understand what what the, what religion and what doubt and fear and unbelief will do to you? It'll hinder you from ever receiving anything from God. I'm telling you, it will hinder you from receiving anything because God wants us to to always receive from him by faith. Accept it. Believe you receive it, according to Mark 11, 24. Let me go back and read that. I hadn't put that before my eyes in a while myself, and I, I need to hear it just like everybody else does. I need to see it, and I want, I want to urge you to uh, put it before your eyes and believe it. It said, Mark eleven twenty four says, Therefore I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you, play, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. What did he say? When you're praying about something, believe you receive it. Believe you receive it. How do you believe you receive something? You receive it by, you believe it by faith and receive it by faith and allow the Holy Spirit to convince you by God's word that you can have it, that you can have it. And when I was in such turmoil over who I was, how I was so sin conscious of every little thing that I'd done in my life being being a, a detriment to me succeeding as a Christian life, you know, th- those things, it's all the little things in your life that mess you up. It ain't never, uh, very seldom is it really just one big gargantuan deal. It's always the little stuff, and it'll stack up on you, stack up on you. Before you know it, it's overwhelming. Listen, we've been freely given a lot by God, freely given by God a whole lot. But if you're ever going to receive it, you got to believe that it's yours. You got to receive what you have been given by God, promised by God. Believe what he said in his word, stand on it, and allow the Holy Spirit to guide you and direct you. Every time the devil sticks his ugly head up and says, no, you can't have it. I'm going to beg to differ with you. I promise you, you can have it. I feel like the Lord wants me to read the 28th chapter of Deuteronomy. Not the whole chapter, but the first 14 verses. Because I'm going to tell you something. If you ever want to realize what God has for you, you have got to put your eyes on his word and determine in your heart that you're going to believe it. 28th chapter of Deuteronomy, the first 14 verses. This is the promise that God made to to the children of Israel, Abraham's seed. Remember? Abraham's seed. It says, It came to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord God of God, to observe and do all his commandments, which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Now let me let me stop right there. When you when you when you read that first verse, if you're if you're sin conscious, 
and 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 you're so wound up in what you've done, that right there will mess you up right out of the gate. Jesus fulfilled those things. You are in him, in Christ Jesus, your Lord and Savior. God sees you in him. So therefore, that he has set you on high above all nations of the earth. And all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake you if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord God God. In other words, believe it. Believe what it says. It says, blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shalt, shalt thou be when thou goest out. He said, I'll bless you every direction you go. Just believe me. Believe me. Stand in what, what Jesus Christ done to give you these blessings. It says, The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up. The Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way and flee before thee seven ways. I've seen the devil do all he can to kill me, come against me, and he had to run. Why? Because God's on my side. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, and I watched the devil have to flee, oh, multiple times in my life because God was watching after his own child, me you, and anybody else that will believe him. The eighth verse says, The Lord shall command the blessing upon me in thy storehouses, and in all that thou settest thy hand unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself. Have you ever had a, a problem in your life accepting what God has, has given you? I have. I believe it. He said, The Lord shall establish you a holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his way. Who done that? Jesus done that. He done that to give us these promises. Number 10 says, And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of thy body, in the fruit of thy cattle, in the fruit of thy ground in the land which the Lord thy God swear unto thy fathers to give thee. And the Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, and the heaven to give the rain, and to the land in his season, and to bless and to bless all the works of your hands. He said, I'll bless everything you do. And thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which I command thee this day, to observe and to do them, and thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. See here, God wants us to know without a shadow of a doubt, he has freely given us everything, everything that pertains to life and godliness. He has blessed us in every direction we can turn if we'll just believe what he says. Now, I've got a question for you today. Are you born again? Can you say that these blessings are yours? Because God wants to give them to you. I promise you, he wants to do everything in his power to help you see and realize just how much he loves you, just how much he wants to save you. Romans 10 and 9 says, If you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus... And believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. It says you shall be saved. It says for with the heart man believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's all it takes to be born again. That's all it takes to be saved. Won't you be born again today? Won't you allow Jesus Christ to come into your heart and into your life and save you? He will. He will. There's millions out here that don't realize that he's for you. He's for them. I want you to understand that today. Millions that believe in God, believe in Jesus Christ and what he done, but they've never taken the time to invite him in, invited him into their heart and life to be born again. Do that today. Make Jesus Christ Lord of your life today and watch him change your life forever. Now listen, I want to urge you, download this phone app. Go to our website. It's the-prodigalson.com. There's even there's even a, a link to this, this phone app. 
in in the description or in the notes on this podcast. You can get straight to it. But go to our website and get a hold of what God wants to feed you with every day of this week. Six days a week. We take Saturdays off. But six days a week, this podcast goes out to help strengthen people. Why? Because God loves them, and he wants to feed them. He wants to give them what they need to live a triumphant, victorious Christian life, and that is his word. So go to our our website and download this phone app and get all these podcasts coming straight to your phone every day. If you got a prayer request, send it to me. Let us help you to agree with God's word according to what that prayer request is. I want to send you scriptures that you need, that you need to realize what God has done for you in his word about those prayer requests. Go to our website. It's the-prodigalson.com. Now, if you're a partner of this ministry, partners, thank you for all that you do sowing into this ministry, helping us do what God has commissioned us to do, and that is to give his word away free of charge all over this planet. I thank God for faithful people that sow into this ministry, helping us do just that. I pray Mark 10, 29, and 30 over you today. A hundredfold return over everything that you sow into this ministry. Go to our website. If you're not a partner, pray about becoming a partner. It's the-prodigalson.com.